Hi everyone, my name is Bill Laboon. I'm the Technical Education Lead at Web3 Foundation here in Switzerland. And today I want to go through and show you how you can nominate on either Kusama or Polkadot networks. So before you go through this, I'm going to assume that you already have uh, at least one account uh, on Polkadot or Kusama. Uh, if if not, then you should uh, create one. It should uh, it, you should you can do that under under the account setting, uh, but I'm not going to cover that in the video. So the first thing we should talk about is what exactly is staking. So in a traditional proof of work style blockchain, uh, we sort of have a skin in the game by mining, uh, but you don't have that in a proof of stake system. Rather, you bond some of your uh, stake, some of your tokens, and you can gain rewards on them as you're part of uh, locking these tokens in to be used for the security of the network. So in a nominated proof of stake system, such as Polkadot or Kusama, you don't have to run your own server to do this. You can uh, essentially loan your, uh, your DOTS or Kusama tokens to uh, a validator, someone who's actually running uh, a node and producing a block, uh, but you don't need to run one yourself. So in this, I'm going to show you how to, specifically how to nominate, uh, but if you're interested in running your own server, then there are lots of details on how to do that if you look up uh, Polkadot or Kusama validators. So if you go to uh, on your, in your web browser, uh, polkadot.js.org slash apps. Uh, that will take you to uh, the, the main page of uh, an interface to uh, either the Polkadot or Kusama network. By default, it will probably start you off on Kusama. Uh, if you're interested in changing that, go to the upper left-hand corner and select network and go to Polkadot instead. Uh, you will see there are several different possibilities for Polkadot or Kusama. It doesn't really matter which one of these you select. Uh, they're just different nodes on, or different computers, but they're all on the same network. So for instance, both Polkadot hosted by Parity and Polkadot hosted by Web3 Foundation uh, will both connect you to the Polkadot network. The only reason you might want to use one instead of the other is if, if one is down or is acting very slowly or whatever. So we're on Kusama, and since we want to stake, we're going to go to the staking tab. And what we will see here are all of the validators that we can nominate. So the validators are the actual computers which are producing blocks and extending the blockchain. Uh, again, as a nominator, we are just going to loan uh, or you vote for basically these validators uh, that we that we trust that we want to uh, lend our uh, tokens to. So we can see currently on the Kusama network there are 350 slots for validators and 350 validators. Uh, there are 152 other validators that are waiting. Uh, to become active validators, since there's a limit on how many validators there can be. And there are 1,050 accounts that are nominating. That is, they're you know, loaning their money, or excuse me, loaning their tokens to the uh, validators uh, in order for them to stay in the active validator set. So you as a individual user, uh, you can see I have a few uh, accounts here that are already nominating. Click on Account Actions, and then Plus Nominator. So in this screen, we are going to set up our nominator. And while behind the scenes it is more complicated, the user interface here makes it relatively easy for you to set up uh, your, your own nominator. Now generally, you will have two accounts to nominate. A, control, a, a stash account, which is where you're going to store your tokens, uh, and a controller account where you're going to actually issue commands. So you can have both of these uh, 
uh, the same. You can have your stash account be the same as the controller account. And it will be easier uh, to control. Uh, however, you lose the ability to make your stash account be colder, to you know, store it offline. Uh, if you have your controller account online and your stash account cold and offline, your stash can be very secure, uh, but you can control uh, all of the funds in it in terms of which validators uh, that you are, you are nominating. So this lets you do things online using the implicit power of your tokens without actually having those tokens online. Think of it as having you know, a proxy vote on your behalf. So the controller account can act almost as a, a proxy to the tokens in your stash account. So I created uh, two accounts here, uh, tutorial controller and uh, tutorial stash. And my tutorial stash has two Kusama tokens in it. And my tutorial controller only has about 289 milli, milli Kusama. Generally, your controller account doesn't need to have that much uh, uh, tokens in it, just enough for you to issue, issue commands. So if you have a few tenths of a Kusama uh, or a few tenths of a dot in your controller, that's, that's, uh, that's enough. Uh, again, you can have, if you would like, both your tutor, excuse me, your stash and your tutorial be the exact same account. Uh, I like to, as when I name my accounts, give them the name stash and controller so I know what they are. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, again, you can, you will get a warning, but you will be allowed to do it. But for now, I'm going to have my controller and my stash be separate accounts. Value bonded. This next uh, field is how much of your tokens do you want to actually stake? So you don't have to stake all of the value uh, in your account. And in fact, it's good to have a, you know, leave a, a little bit uh, left over so you can run any commands that you might need to run from that uh, stash account. Uh, so here, out of two Kusama in that account, I am bonding one and a half. So we now have uh, the on-chain bonding duration. So when you have a, when you bond your tokens, those tokens will be locked. You won't be able to transfer them. Uh, you will be able to use them for things like on-chain governance, so voting for proposals, uh, but you will not be able to transfer them. And if you, for at least uh, seven days. So once you unbond, once you decide you don't want to be staking anymore, it will take seven days uh, on Kusama or 28 days on Polkadot before you have access to move those tokens again. And finally, the payment destination. You can either put this back in your stash account and increase the amount at stake. So this would be similar to compound interest. Uh, the, as you gain more stake, you will put that back into nominating and gain even more stake. Uh, or you could not increase the amount at stake. So you may want to do this if you want to have those rewards immediately available instead of going back into your stake and then having to be uh, unbonded. This would act more like simple interest. Uh, finally, you may want to put it into your controller account uh, if you need uh, more funds for fees, uh, for instance. Uh, although I generally, uh, when I'm staking, I just increase the amount at, at stake. There are certainly other ways that, uh, that you can do this. So we're now going to choose which validators we want to nominate. By default, Polkadot.js will try to auto-select a good subset of validators for you. And it does this by estimating what your profits will be. Uh, in terms of additional uh, tokens that will be given to you as staking rewards. Uh, however, if uh, you have a specific uh, uh, strategy that you would like to follow, so for instance, you may want to uh, only nominate uh, those validators that have a lot of self-stake that are staking by themselves, or if you know particular people uh, that you would want to make sure that you nominate, uh, you can uh, modify these later. But just for now, we're going to, we can just say uh, use an automatic selection. But if you would like to modify this, we can uh, hit this button and we can set it up uh, 
uh, manually. So uh, here I'm just going to, uh, I like Italy, uh, I'm just going to add these particular ones. Uh, let's say you know, I have you know, specific reasons for selecting these, although I'm just uh, picking at random right here. Um, uh, I could select these specific ones, or I could turn this back on and just have this auto-nominate for me. Generally, auto-nomination does pretty well, uh, but you may want to occasionally go back and check to make sure that you are still nominating those that you want to nominate. So we're going to click Bond and Nominate, and I'm going to enter the password for my account. You can see in the corner that uh, I have a command, a batch, actually a bunch of, of uh, extrinsics, a bunch of commands I want to send into the network uh, waiting for me. Uh, we're going to sign and submit and uh, wait a moment as our uh, transaction is broadcast. So now we can see with uh, tutorial stash, I have one and a half Kusama bonded and I have 16 waiting nominations. So what we're waiting for here is for the next uh, epoch uh, to occur. Uh, so once this happens, uh, once, excuse me, once the new era uh, occurs, then you uh, will start gaining rewards. Uh, these eras are uh, six hours uh, in, uh, in Kusama. There are four per day. So we're going to have to wait until uh, the next one. We can actually find out where we are in this if we go back to staking overview. And you can see that uh, of this era for six hours, we are now on block 321 out of 3600. Uh, and so this is, uh, we're gonna have to wait a while uh, uh, for, for us to actually start gaining rewards on that, on that account. So if we go back to account actions, we could uh, decide that we want to stop uh, using the staking.chill command and say that we don't actually want to do this, um, cancel that. Uh, or we can bond more funds or unbond some of the funds. We can change what our controller account is for the stash uh, or change the reward destination. So remember, we were increasing the amount at stake. We could decide we don't want to increase the amount at stake or send it to the controller account instead. Uh, or we can decide we want to set nominees. So if we decide that uh, nominees that we were using before are not the ones that we want now, we can modify them here. Once you are uh, nominating, you will see that you may see active nominations, inactive nominations, and waiting nominations. So the, generally you will only see one active nomination at a time. Uh, these will uh, change as the epoch changes. Uh, or as the, as, excuse me, as, as the blocks uh, change, and inactive nominations uh, will, will take over. Uh, so you will have one active nomination generally at a time. Uh, it is entirely normal to have active and inactive nominations. If you see waiting nominations, these are nominations of validators that are not in the active validator set. So that can warn you that uh, if you have many of these that uh, perhaps you want to uh, either stop nominating them, uh, and make sure that you are nominating at least some that are active or inactive, uh, because if you have a nomination, if you have all waiting nominations, you won't gain any rewards because none of your validators are actually uh, producing blocks and thus giving you rewards. So choosing validators can be difficult. Um, so as I mentioned, you can always just uh, allow the, the algorithm to select for you, and it will pick ones that it uh, thinks would be uh, uh, good for you. Uh, however, if you'd like to go into more detail, you can look at targets, and you'll have a list of all of the validators, um, as well as your estimated profit per era, uh, assuming you have 1,000 uh, tokens. Uh, if you have a, a different number, you can just type that in uh, here, if so you have 4,000, um, then this would be your profit per era estimate. And remember in Kusama, an era is every uh, uh, six hours. So if this had 4,000 
uh, Kusamas and I nominated only this particular validator, I would get on average every six hours 0.183 Kusamas. Uh, this, this value is actually, um, you know, it's rather difficult to calculate. It's based on the amount of commission that the validator takes, that is how much, what percentage do they take of your, uh, of, of the rewards each era, uh, how much total stake they have versus how much you'd be adding to it, uh, as well as the staking percentage of the entire system. So you can he see here in Kusama, we have about 61% staked. The maximum amount of stake will be provided at about, uh, of, excuse me, of rewards will be provided at about 50% uh, stake. If there's less than that, individual stakers will uh, gain more uh, tokens per era, and if there are more, they, they will gain less. So we can think of it as, as sort of a, almost a bell curve, uh, where if there is less than 50% staked, then we try to make it much more uh, valuable for people to stake, and if they're more than 50%, we make it slightly less valuable for people to stake, and they do other things uh, with, with their token. The last thing I wanted to cover uh, uh, actually, uh, is, is payouts. So there's uh, actually a, a sort of complicated way that your rewards will be given to your account. Uh, the validator has to, or somebody actually has to call a command in order to uh, pay out uh, the rewards to every, uh, every nominator. So normally the validator themselves will do this, but if you haven't received uh, uh, payouts, you can actually go uh, to this screen, uh, the, the payout screen. It does take quite a while for it to show up, and you can force the, the payouts. This does mean that you have to pay uh, a slight fee, a very small fee, just for a transaction. Uh, however, uh, it will make sure that you get uh, your rewards if they don't automatically give them to you. So the last uh, uh, thing I wanted to cover here is if you're interested in more statistics on a uh, particular validator, you'll see there is a little uh, chart uh, on the far right uh, in, of each validator. And this little chart icon will retrieve information uh, for that specific validator so that you can see uh, if they've been slashed or you know, the amount of rewards they've been, been giving, uh, how much stake is behind them and what has been uh, the history of that stake. Uh, it will take a little while to gather all of this information, so don't be uh, concerned uh, if it does, but this will allow you uh, to look up more information and make a better informed decision about uh, which validators you actually want to follow. So hopefully this has whet your appetite uh, for uh, staking on uh, Kusama or Polkadot. Uh, thank you very much, and I will see you uh, on, uh, on the networks.